we're talking about answering the call and last few weeks Ilya also talked about it and I talked about answering the call the difference between career and calling and all of these good things a lot of people always want to know what is my place in the body of Christ what is my place in the church and I'm going to give you just a few pointers that I heard from this philosopher or uh, not philosopher, I'm sorry, from a, um, a guy with a PhD. He's a professor in the university, a young man. He's going to be here next year with us for internship. Real excited for him, Christian, uh, Christian young man. But before I share those two things, I want to mention something. If you want to move effectively in your calling, I believe the prerequisite to that and believe the most important trait to be successful, not only in your calling, but even in your life. Is to be secure in who you are in Christ. When you are not secure you will always compare your calling to someone else's gift. You will always be intimidated by someone else and the worst part about insecure people they cannot stand successful people. They always bring down successful people. They always want to push down because to them if they're not on the top, if nobody sings kumbaya, kumbaya my Lord, to them they feel their world collapses. They live off of people's compliments and they died out of people's criticism. They're never passionate to grow. If you ever give them feedback you will destroy their feelings. Why? Because their passion is to protect their ego not to grow. And in order for us to be people who fulfill our calling, the first thing we have to do is to be secure in yourself. When you're secure in being a finger, not trying to be a brain. When you're secure in being the ears instead of being the legs. Listen, you will be the best you God can be and other people who are not sure of what they're supposed to be, they will always want to be like you. You know it's very important even for myself you know I sometimes meet pastors who can lead worship and who can preach. I'm tempted to be insecure about it and I'm, tempt I'm tempted to be the person who say well I want to sing but I'm like in one service sing and preach that's a lot and so and the thing about it, you have to understand what are you good at what God gifted you with and with that point and celebrate when you begin to focus and what God called you to do and realize this is that your job is not to be like someone else but be the best you you will celebrate other people you will admire you will say I am blessed to be around successful people you know our church is surrounded with very successful people if if you, you don't realize that look at your neighbor you can look in the mirror in the bathroom you will see you are the person we have people who are gifted and people who are successful and I'm going to tell you one thing one of the reasons why our church will have those people and one of the reasons why those people will stay in our church is because the leadership of our church the goal is not to put a ceiling on every person the goal is to be a ladder where every person can be empowered not controlled can somebody say amen in order to be successful in your calling you have to be secure in who you are when you are secure in who you are God will grow you in your calling I remember being in meetings where people would you know come up right before me and heal every sick person in the building and you know and there was in those times where I didn't pray for the sick and praise God I didn't pray for the sick because you know the only time people would die they do, wouldn't get healed and stuff so I didn't want people to die just just didn't pray for them at all and stuff just did an altar call for salvation and and I have well, I was tested inside because part of me is like God I feel now like whatever I'm going to do is unimportant because I'm not as good as someone else and the Lord had to work on my heart and simply say for right now the grace that you have be the best at that grace and celebrate don't be critical and don't be competing listen that person that God has given them this grace honestly praise be to God from the bottom of your heart say Lord I am glad that we are on the same team because it would be bad if they would be on the opposite team but we're on the same team be, can, be very secure in who you are if you're not secure in who you are any calling you get any gift you get God forbid you get every gift in this world you're a controlling monster you are you will never be happy small little criticism from people will send you into rage if things don't go your way you're not a person who is to be it's hard to be with you it's hard to have you on a team it's hard to be married to you it's hard to have you as a mom and dad and it's very hard to have you as a child it's hard to have you as a friend because you're constantly you're like this hungry person never enough of attention never enough of that because that will never come from people it only comes from God when people compliment you, when people love on you, it's always as an as a addition. But the source 
is the Lord is the Word of God people's compliments are like a gum God's Word is the bread so with that said how do you find your specific calling within the body of Christ um, yeah I was kind of hoping we could get them one by one but you can write this down or just quickly take a picture of it it will help you and if you're watching us or listening on that the first way that you can find your specific calling is from revelation from God when God reveals to you either in a dream in a vision through a prophecy through a man of God when God reveals to you through prayer your specific calling you will have this knowing that you know that you know that you know the second way that people find their specific calling is sometimes an advice from people it comes like this you're good at this you should try this why you know what when you do it it gets done properly and when you do it people love it sometimes people will give you hints on what your callings are especially people in authority people like your parents people that are your mentors or people that are like you maybe your pastors the third the, th the third thing that how you can find your specific calling is the needs of the world that get your attention the needs of the world from Moses Moses knew his calling the moment he saw somebody beating one of the Israelites and instead of going to court he took a stone and beat the guy to death now what he did was wrong but something was exposed in his heart he could not see the abuse like everyone did it cost Moses his career because he ran for his life it cost him his palace but there was something he snapped inside when he saw that kind of a thing and it's sometimes your specific calling within the body of Christ are the things you complain about in the church all the time they bother you something bothers you and the problem is not with the church the problem is that God created you to be the solution to that problem and God doesn't give you the other people can do exactly same thing they can come and they will not even notice that but if you're noticing something inside of you you're noticing about your city something is moving you saying you know what I need to do something about it that maybe sometimes could be a signal that God has called you in that area the needs of the world can be a trigger point to see the calling of God in your life number number four is your passion it's the things you're passionate about it's the things that that are you're excited about it's the things that you could do if you never get paid for it it's the things that you would do and you actually get refueled from it people look for a vacation for you that is your vacation that's your hobby that's just something that drives you and another one is your talents and your gifts sometimes looking at your talents and your gifts you can right away see where your calling is because your talents and your gifts were given to you by God specifically to help you fulfill your calling and so when you look at what you're gifted at when you're looking at what you're talented with many times through that you can actually see that you are called and the last one is your experiences it's the things you went through many times become the platform by which God will use you and this is something that I want to mention on this morning is when what you went through becomes your ministry is when the things that the enemy used trying to kill you God not only protected you but now is going to use you in that area to help other people answer the call in Judges chapter 3 verse 9 it says the following when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel who delivered them. This verse has become the theme even for our conferences and this verse people don't realize but every place Apostle John Chi goes, they name the conference that he goes to raise to deliver. In Ethiopia where thousands of people gathered the title of that conference in Ethiopia was raised to deliver and they kind of attached that now to Apostle John Chi but that title is really attached to hunger generation because we are raised to deliver the Bible says in here that when Israel was in bondage and when they were in pain that God would go on the side and he would raise somebody up from where everyone was at he would raise them up and he would not just raise them up because they were better than other people he didn't just raise them up because they were cleaner they were holier and they were more disciplined and they deserved not to be with the rest of the crew God supernaturally the Bible says here raised them up 
so the fact that they were not like the rest of the people they couldn't take the credit for it if God gave us a secret and he says they were not in the place that they were on their own it was God's supernatural sovereign grace that raised them up from the circle that they were constantly in from their community from the people that they lived in they were in bondage but this one person was not in bondage because God says he raised them up see I believe one of the biggest things that we have to understand is the reason we are not under the bridge the reason why we're not on drugs the reason why we are not today living a broken and shattered life is because of the mercy and the grace of God the moment you start giving credit to your discipline to your Christian parents and everyone else you lose the whole point that song that we were singing today where it says that that you made a way or I don't know how how, how do you say uh, we were singing at the end is that I don't know why I don't know why you did it I don't know how you did it but you made a way I started to remember even flashes of where God protected me from I get a chance to come around broken people all the time and probably you do as well and sometimes it's easy to pat yourself on the back and say it's because I, I didn't lose my virginity at in high school it's because I grew up in a Christian family but the Bible makes me to understand God raised them up you didn't raise yourself up by your shoelaces it wasn't your discipline now give glory to God for your parents I give glory to God for growing up in a Christian or good country or good environment I give glory to God to the fact that you know you had your head, head on the shoulder but at the end of the day if you look behind the curtains the Bible says it was an invisible hand of God that raised you up and it wasn't just so that you can take credit for you it's because God had a reason God had a purpose and God had an assignment the Bible says the Lord raised him up to deliver to deliver and to myself I always remind myself is that I could have lived just a normal life I could have ended my life 17 18 years ago when chronic insecurity was there when I had migraine headaches when I was no one and somebody started to speak life into me and somebody started to give me an opportunity and yes God protected me from drugs and yes God protected me from immorality and yes God protected me from being addicted to different substances but in reality God didn't just do that because I was more special than other people who are strung out on drugs God did that because he wanted to to use someone like me to be able to reach out to them not with I'm holier than thou attitude but with saying hey God mercy showed mercy to me let me lend you a hand let's go so we can reach a generation for Christ somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. you were raised by God every light that we put up is there to shine we don't put up lights and if they don't shine we know that we, we, we replace light bulbs God puts us as the head and not the tail God wants to raise us up from among our generation make you stand out make you special make you unique not just because of you but because of the mission and the assignment he wants to expose he wants to literally let it come out through your life you were raised to deliver you were raised to save you were raised to help you were saved not just because someone prayed for you but because God knows he can also use you to save other people you know many years ago when the Lord gave us this building and when I say the Lord gave us this building it was nearly impossible to have a building with just being a small little church that we were we didn't have the funds we didn't have the connections our senior pastor wasn't even licensed our church wasn't registered and we went into this building we declared this building to be ours we already had a celebration everything and then the school lost their facility a, a head start elementary school they lost their preschool they lost their facility in Pasco they were looking for a facility to rent here and they came and I remember I was one of those people who I didn't speak English but we were all trying to translate you know when you have six people who don't speak English but they know a little bit of English you can you can actually come up with a reasonable translation <laughs> and the school came and they asked us could we rent this facility and we were pretending like this was our building it wasn't our building we didn't have the ownership for it but they didn't have to know 
in the spirit realm we occupied this building already and so we said of course you can rent our building and they said how much would you guys charge for rent and we had no idea about rent prices and we were saying maybe maybe five hundred dollars a month or something like that that would be probably a good good number and they said well we can't just pay you five hundred dollars we have to get our own inspection and we're like oh i hope it's not gonna come less than that and so the inspector came in they did all the appraisals and everything they said the least we can pay you is two thousand dollars we said well if you can insist on that price i'm pretty sure we can come to some kind of a mutual agreement and stuff we came to the mutual agreement god gave us the contract we came into this building we finally found the money for down payment they gave us this building and our dream since then been god we know that you gave us this building not because we were better than any other church we're not even paying for this building not because we're better than others because you want us to be people in tri-cities that will impact our city i remember friday nights i remember wednesday services literally crying out to god like almost we owe to god now to do something about our lives saying god we want to see this place packed for us that was the ceiling for us that was the big dream to see this place packed with souls let people come God we want to see people come and there was nobody coming but see when God gives you something and you know that you had very little to do with it you find out the purpose for why he did that and you will do whatever it takes so that purpose becomes real the reason there's something that drives in our heart for souls is not just oh we just want to see a big church but God did something already God raised us up God gave us this facility God brought the healing God preserved us God protected us and he's saying I did it for the reason I did it for the purpose I will use you to impact your generation can somebody give God a shout of praise can somebody give God a shout of praise for protecting you for saving you, for healing you. Today this place is filled and that's why while you are here today you see images on the screen of places that are hundred times bigger than ours because that's exactly what we're praying for today. God we want to see thousands locally and millions globally. We owe to God for that. Do you remember? I want you to remember something. You determine the value of the cross not Jesus you determine the value of the cross if people don't get saved the cross is not very valuable to the humanity if people don't get healed the value of the cross gets diminished God placed that within our hands to bring the lamb a reward for his suffering can somebody say amen and we see here is that God raised them up to deliver I want to read another verse that's similar to this in first chronicles chapter 22 and verse 19 and 18 it says is not the Lord your God with you and has he not given you rest on every side for he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hand and the land is subdued before the Lord before his people now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God therefore arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy articles into to God of God into the house that is to be built in the name of the Lord and we see that a little bit later David speaks to Solomon and he says this he says God has given you rest on every side God is with you he said he's given you an inheritance he's given you he's subdued your enemies in front of you and David gives him this assignment he says now make up your mind to serve God and secondly he says arise and build him a house it caught my attention because I feel like a lot of times when God answers our prayer when God saves us or rescues us from sin or our past or when God delivers us from demons, curses, where God opens our eyes and we see Jesus for who he is in all his beauty and all his glory. When we receive the inheritance of the promises of God, when we feel rest in our life like Alex mentioned, we feel peace in our life. It's so easy sometimes to feel like that God did all of that because he just wants you to enjoy your life. 
and it's true he wants you to enjoy your life but he wants you to make up your mind after your deliverance after your healing after your blessing to make up your mind that I'm gonna live my life for Jesus I'm gonna live my life for God I was seeking God when I had nothing and I will continue to seek God when I have everything I was seeking God when I was sick but I will continue to seek God when I am healthy I was seeking God when I was poor and I couldn't find money to pay my bills but I will continue to seek God if I have more money that I know what to do with it why because God is my God not the money it's very important that you make up your mind because I like what T.B. Joshua says he says how you manage your good times will determine whether they will turn into bad times a lot of people they don't their deliverance don't last and their deliverance doesn't lead to anything is because after they get delivered they become complacent and they relax now the passion the drive they had for the Lord when they were down to nothing the, the, the sharpness in their spirit the, the, the zeal for the things of God now begins to tone it down because you were fueled by pain now God says I want you to be fueled by your decision make up your mind David says to Solomon to serve God I don't believe I need to have problems to pray I don't believe I, I need to always get sick for God to God get my attention now in my earlier days maybe yes but I say you know what God I can use an alarm clock to wake me up now God I'm gonna seek you when I have everything and I'm gonna seek you when I have nothing why because you are the God and in my prosperity in my rest in my victory God you will still see me praying you will still see me early at church you will still me tithing still see me tithing God you will still see me battling God you will still see me fasting God you will still see me humble why because all of these things they're very extra and you are the source of all of them make up your mind he said but I want you to see another thing that David said build the temple of the Lord you would think when God delivered you on every side when God gave you victory from all your enemies now it's the time for you to build your life but God says build my house meaning my dream my goal build what concerns my kingdom that is the salvation of people that is healing of people and that is the deliverance of people if you've been delivered if you've been set free if you've been through hell and back and God saw you through listen to this warning don't make building your life your aim build God's kingdom and God promises in Matthew 6 33 he will begin to add things that other people are seeking you've been through stuff you've been delivered you've been rescued and sometimes there's that temptation I lost 10 years to the devil I need to quickly start building my life I need to get schooling I need to get this I need to get that and people are in a hurry to build their life and many times they slip back into certain sins God protection God's protection is on your purpose not just on your ambition it's when you dedicate yourself to the things that God calls you for and as you build your calling things that other people will seek you will see they will begin to come slowly to you one by one but being in the will of God is the most important thing in your life. I know people who in a hurry quickly got married, children, houses and cars and, and all of that stuff really, really fast. But they put God on the side. They put God's will on the side. And very soon, you see, it's like that person on the highway that passes you by really, really fast. And then you're there driving 55 miles per hour and you're seeing them being pulled over. You know, huh, not so fast, huh? That's how life is sometimes it's always better to be in the center of the will of God may you not be maybe so successful maybe you're not going to be so rich maybe you're not going to impress your neighbors and maybe nobody's going to be jealous of you but when you lay your head on the pillow every night you will know creator of the universe is pleased with you and when your eyes close there for the last time you won't be tormented you won't be leaving home you will be going home you won't be dragged by demons you'll be picked up by angels and my friend no matter how many diets you are on no matter what kind of doctor you have that day is approaching 
for every one of us and that's why David tells Solomon he says make up your mind to serve the Lord you're not gonna fight Solomon you will have gold and silver but he says Solomon you're not gonna go through stuff that other people went through I went through stuff I was persecuted but Solomon things will go so easy for you and that's why I don't want you to have pain to drive you only to God be a mature man you drive yourself to God you make your own decisions say Lord whether on a bus or on a Mercedes whether without shoes or with nice shoes God you're gonna see me go into your house and that's what David tells him and secondly he says Solomon first and foremost build God his house he will help you build yours he will build you a dynasty but that's not the most important thing in Jesus name can somebody say amen I want to encourage each person this morning in our church and I have the main part of the message I didn't get to we'll get to maybe some other time I want to tell you something this morning that somebody messaged me a few weeks ago and said how could loving God send people to hell and this person was definitely concerned he says I cannot wrap my mind how could God send people who never heard of the gospel to hell and I replied back and I said number one you don't care about those people anyway why do you ask if you would care about those people you would have done something and number two it's not why God is sending people to hell why do you send people to hell God sent his son God has done everything God could do without violating human will he's done everything and part of God's plan is he also sent you and there you are being mad at God because he doesn't save people when in reality he's called you to do that so my question to you sir why do you send people to hell God doesn't send people to hell church God created heaven for them God doesn't want people to live in hell on earth God uses us God uses us and many times while we sit there blame God when in reality it's us how many people today don't live with a vision don't live with intention don't live with urgency and I'm not talking about that you stand on the street corner with a microphone I'm talking about that something as simple as opening host group something as simple as inviting somebody to church something as simple as telling your friend about the Lord something as simple as about praying for someone yes I can save the world but I can make a difference in the world God places me in I can't save the whole three cities and I'm not gonna ever try to but if each one of us are gonna be lived with intention and urgency we will make a difference in our generation we will make it hard for people to go to hell in our city because now it's not up to God church it's up to us and the Holy Spirit is with us so it's not really up to us it's up to us and the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit does the heavy lifting thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come